In this video, I'm discussing six wines that I believe are underrated. Some of these are obscure gems, while others are from more recognizable regions, but simply don't get the attention that I think they deserve. There's a mix of red wines and white wines, all of which are $99 or less, and four of them are even $45 or less. The first underrated wine that I'm buying now comes from outstanding Loire-based producer Domaine Oue. I'm talking about the 2021 Luo Lusec. Some may disagree with the notion that this iconic producer or its wines could be underrated, but in my experience, other than those who are in the business or those who are extremely knowledgeable about wine, you don't really hear too much about Chenin Blanc, about Domaine Oue, or even about Loire wines generally. And I think the best evidence of that is despite the fact that this wine is highly acclaimed and has been for many years, and we're in a period of rampant inflation and price increases for wine, you can nevertheless find this outstanding wine for only around 35 to 40 bucks a bottle. If you're not familiar with Chenin Blanc from Vouvray, it can sometimes have some residual sugar in it, but this one is definitely a dry wine. Chenin Blanc also has very high acidity. This particular wine has flavors and aromas that include apple, peach, lychee, honeycomb, and floral notes. It's a very elegant wine that has around 13% alcohol by volume. This producer has a large number of different bottlings, but this particular wine comes from the producer's original or first vineyard. This is a 9 hectare vineyard that's farmed biodynamically. This one tends to produce wines that are a little bit more approachable compared to some of the other bottlings from this producer. Nevertheless, all the wines from this producer are extremely age-worthy. For this wine, you can enjoy it when it's young, but I would definitely encourage you to also put some of the bottles away so that you can see how it evolves with some age on it. While Super Tuscan wines are generally not underrated, I certainly hear the most about big names such as Sasakaya, Ornalaya, Solaya, and Tignanello. And for that reason, there's a number of outstanding wines that kind of slip through the cracks a little bit and don't get the attention that they deserve, at least in my opinion. One such name is the Gratamaco Bulgari Superiore. This highly acclaimed wine sells for $99, which is also much less than those other more well-publicized names. This stellar Super Tuscan wine is a red blend that consists of around 65% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot, and there's around 15% of Sangiovese in this wine. I really like the inclusion of this Sangiovese. Even though it's a relatively small percentage, it adds a lot of freshness to this wine that I really appreciate. This is a wine that I would recommend putting away for a few years, as it will definitely improve with a little bit more bottle age. They make about 5,400 cases of it, but only around 300 of them are imported into the United States. And so if you're located in the United States, you'll definitely want to seek this one out sooner rather than later as this wine will go pretty quickly and it's been on the shelves for a little while now. The next underrated wine that I'm buying now comes from the Amalfi Coast EOC in southern Italy. I tried this wine for the first time last fall when I was in Rome. I was asking the sommelier about some of my favorite white wines from Italy, which include Greco di Tufo, Falangina, and some others, but the sommelier suggested this wine instead. He said that it's one of the most significant wines in southern Italy and certainly one of the top white wines in all of Italy. This is an outstanding wine that's been produced since about 1995 or so, but which definitely doesn't get the respect that it deserves worldwide, at least not in my opinion. And so the next underrated wine that I'm buying now is the 2020 Marisa Cuomo Fiorore Bianco Fioraduva, which comes from the Amalfi Coast DOC. This outstanding white wine is made from a blend of three obscure indigenous white grapes. These grapes are grown on vines that average an impressive 80 years of age and which are planted on south-facing coastal terraces at elevations ranging from 200 to 550 meters above sea level. While you might think that this is too warm or too sunny a location to make high-quality wine from grapes due to the south-facing aspect of the vineyards, that's not actually the case for several reasons. First, the elevation provides some cooling influences and cooling nighttime temperatures that help to preserve acidity. Second, there's limestone soils, which also help to provide some cooling influences. And third, the vines are trained to pergola, 
and this means that the vines form a canopy that helps to provide shade from the afternoon sun. And so these vines don't experience the sunburn that they might get if they were not shaded or trained to pergola formation. The result is that this is an absolutely magical place to produce wine. People often ask me how I'm able to distinguish wines with greater complexity from those that are more simple. And one way is the ease of which you're able to identify numerous discrete descriptors. With simple wines, there'll be just a couple little descriptors, and you won't get an overwhelming avalanche of descriptors. But with very complex wines, you'll be able to easily identify a number of discrete different descriptors. And so it was with this wine. Flavors and aromas for the impressive Fioraduva included grapefruit, apricot, pineapple, Buddha's hand, peach, honey, almond, jasmine, and wet rock. Despite the fact that some of these descriptors suggest that the fruit was ripe and sweet, this wine was bone dry, but it had ample acidity as well. On the palate, the intensely concentrated fruit flavors were offset by intriguing minerality. The finish for this wine was long and complex. Definitely one of the more memorable Italian white wines I have ever had, and certainly an underrated wine that I'm buying now. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. The next underrated wine that I'm buying now comes from the Castilla y Leon area in Northwest Spain. Specifically, it comes from the Bierzo region. And this wine is a Mencia. Mencia accounts for around 75% of all plantings in Bierzo. This is a wine that comes from legendary winemaker Raul Perez, who's one of the most highly regarded winemakers, not only in Spain, but in the entire world. Mr. Perez has been making wine for more than 30 years since he was only 22. Mr. Perez has several projects in Spain, but this one is from producer La Vizcaína, and it's the 2020 La Vittoriano Tinto. This wine is produced from organically farmed hillside vines that average an impressive 50 years of age. While it's labeled Mencia, it may include a little bit of Alicante Boucher, as well as some other indigenous varieties. Despite the fact that this wine received an impressive 97-point rating from Robert Parker, it sells for only around $40 to $45 in the United States. To help preserve freshness for this wine, the producer uses whole cluster fermentation and makes sure that they're vigilant with the harvest dates. With Mencia, it can lose acidity rapidly if you harvest it too late. And so the harvest date is especially important for Mencia. The producer's objective is definitely to emphasize the purity of fruit for this wine. And so they mature the wine in neutral oak vessels of various sizes in for only about a year. This wine has impressive fruit flavors and aromas of mixed berry, lavender, violets, and wet rock. This wine has a long finish with fine grain tannins. Definitely a wine that I highly recommend and one that's very much underrated. The next underrated wine that I'm buying now comes from the Yakima Valley in Washington State. It's a highly regarded wine, but one that sells for only around $40 to $45. This wine is a consistently excellent wine year in and year out, so the recommendation is not vintage specific. I'm referring to the B. Leighton Gratitude. The B. Leighton Gratitude is a GSM blend that's actually dominant in Mourved, which comprises almost 70% of the blend, and then there's around 25% Grenache and only 5% Syrah. This is another producer that uses only neutral oak to mature the wines, and so there's an emphasis on the purity of the fruit. The result is a very aromatic wine, and one of the things that I enjoy most about Rhone varietals is the extreme aromatics and some of the unusual and intriguing aromatics that you can get from some of these wines. And this is an excellent example of that. This wine has flavors and aromas that include mixed red and black fruit, iron, meat, green olives, mixed spice, and even floral notes. This is a wine that also has velvety tannins. You can enjoy it in the near term, or you can age it for another seven to eight years. So it gives you lots of flexibility. Definitely one that I think you'll enjoy. The next underrated wine that I'm buying now is the 2020 Domaine Decon Ausse Dures Old Vines Blanc. 
And while this wine is from Burgundy, Alsace Durace is definitely known more for red wine, and it's also a Burgundian village that's definitely under the radar compared to some other more famous villages. Domaine Decon is a small family-owned producer with only about 10 hectares of vineyards spread across three villages in Burgundy. It is currently run by the third generation. This particular wine is a wine that I found a few weeks ago at a Michelin star restaurant in Paris. I was very surprised by the attractive pricing on this wine. It was only around 75 or 80 euros, despite the fact that I was in one of the most expensive locations in all of Paris. And so definitely a tremendous value at this price point, and one that would be a fraction of that if you find it at retail pricing. This wine is 100% Chardonnay that comes from old vines, the oldest of which were planted way back in 1925, and the youngest of which were planted in 1959. So certainly impressive aging on those vines. The result is a wine that is round, but with depth of flavor and extreme complexity. There was some texture and minerality to it, but there was also an intriguing floral aromatic that I really appreciated. This impressive wine also paired perfectly with the shrimp and the turbo courses that I enjoyed for lunch. If there's one problem with this wine, it may be that it's somewhat difficult to locate, especially compared to the other wines that I'm discussing today. But nevertheless, everyone is always looking for a great deal on some Burgundy, and so I thought it was worth mentioning. At a minimum, you may be able to pick it up if you're traveling or if you're at a restaurant with an outstanding wine list. And if you're interested in more underrated wines, be sure to check out the videos in the pinned comment below.